hill. Oh my god, it's a fish. Right, let the cringe begin guys we're out here day three of me trying to catch fish out here on the san joaquin river delta and we are going to try our best one trip we came out here grinded it all day got three bites caught one good one then we came out here again grinded it all day got a couple bites no fish and now we're out here fishing a pre-storm bite hoping it's going to be a little bit better because we have a big storm rolling in here. Today is Friday. The storm's gonna be rolling in Saturday, or sorry, later today into Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and a little bit into Tuesday. So hopefully these fish are gonna be chewing. I got a wide variety of stuff to come out here and uh, throw. I got a top spin, Texas rig, shaky head, crank bait. I got a live bait rig because I got some minnows out here left over from the last trip out here striper fishing. So we're gonna throw the whole kitchen sink at them. And we might even catch a kitchen sink out here because if you guys know anything about this river, there's a lot of trash in here. But we got some wood. And we got some flooded wood too because the flows are up a little bit so we have a lot of stuff that we can come out here flip pitch throw into it's gonna be an absolute train wreck cringe of a video like always guys but hopefully this time it's gonna be a little different we can get on some good fish a quick tip for you guys out there that might be an experienced flipper or just getting into it so normally when you're flipping kind of stuff like this like that stuff right there the brazilian water grass and the penny wart and stuff like that normally you'd be throwing braid and you'd be punching it with an ounce or more. But this, I'm flipping this with a half ounce and uh, I'm throwing fluoro, 15 pound tactical P line. And a lot of times when you're flipping in some of this thick brush, they hit it on the fall. And it's kind of hard to tell and detect the bite when you're throwing fluoro and they hit it on the fall like that, unless it's a very violent strike and you see your line jump and you feel it throughout your rod. It comes to those times when those fish are not really being active and stuff like that. And they're not really wanting to crush that bait. What I like to do is when I'm letting it fall down throughout the tree, I like to keep my thumb on the spool and in direct contact with the line. So if I do feel any little differential when I'm falling through the tree, normally you feel that little tink, 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 tink when you're falling down, hitting limbs and stuff like that. And then eventually you'll feel something that just feels a little bit different and you're able to detect what it is. So that's what I like to do. And hopefully if you guys don't do it, you're willing to give it a shot and try it and you will see the difference. I have to believe these fish are going to bury up in, in this stuff this time of year. Oh, he came off. No. Way up in there, too. Not a very good bite. Did not feel very big, but maybe we get lucky and he'll come back and hit it. If it's a spotted bass, he might. Oh my goodness, really? <laughs> Flipping in there, this is what I catch. What is that? Oh, it's a little largemouth. When I mean little, I mean little. Oh, that's a spot. Uh -oh. There we go. I mean, he's not terrible. First fish of the day. <laughs> A little bit of some wintertime light punching right there in some of the brush. Here's an absolute tip for you guys that could honestly help the fish population and help you if you are um, a you know, tournament fisherman. So a lot of people out here that do go fishing, they carry carbonated drinks, whether it's beer, soda, and uh, anything really carbonated. Sparkling water works the best. I don't condone you know, pouring beer in a fish's mouth because I don't really know the effects of alcohol. But I do know the effects of caffeine in a fish. So anything that goes on their gills, they could absorb. So he's not bleeding all that terribly, and especially not on the gills. He's just right here on the side of the gill plate. So if this fish was gut hooked, gill hooked, and he's bleeding pretty bad, and you want to let him go, or you're a tournament fisherman, crack open a sparkling water, a soda, a ginger ale, anything that's really highly carbonated, and pour it in the area, put them in your well, Give it about five minutes, pull him back out, check the scenario, see if he's still bleeding, and then um, put more um, 
of that carbonated drink on the fish. And you'll be surprised that it does, uh, it does bring them back and it does start the clotting process almost immediately. And I have done that for the last probably 10 years. And then I have seen the effects of it and it does work and it does save that fish. But the reason why I like to throw tactical so much is you guys just saw I caught that fish in some pretty snaggy stuff and my line's not chafed. Tactical is my go-to for flipping tight stuff like this. I throw it a lot on the Delta and I throw it along a lot in the Motherload Lakes where I'm fishing rocks, like that RIP jig rock, a lot of that really thick timber because it's so abrasion resistant and is a little bit thinner line diameter as well. So you do get a little bit more on the spool and that with it being a thinner line diameter, it does have a really high knot strength. So you could get that knot to cinch down really, really good. So if you guys would like some P-Line, there will be a link in the description along with first gen baits. Oh, he came off. No, no. There we go. There we go. It's a good one. There we go. There's a nice one. Bottom up two. Maybe it'll be over three. Probably gonna be over three. Three fifty foe. Hell yeah. Okay, I don't know what those were, but we need to drop down on them. Sixteen foot of water, one on the bottom, they could be anything. What the hell? Oh my god, it's a fish. I don't know what this is. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's gotta be a striper. Yeah, definitely a striper. There we go. Be a bad one either. That's a nice one. Oh, my God. All right, so maybe throwing six pound test wasn't the brightest idea. <laughs> oh my God. But that P-Line six pound Shinsey though, guys, let me tell you, that's wild. <laughs> There we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. On six pound test. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You don't get to do that very, very often.
Oh my god, it's 802. <laughs> An eight pound striper. On six pound test, that's crazy. It's a nice fish. He got bit. What are you? Stripper. Nice. Well, that'd be a good that'd be a good eater right there. Up, oh, watch out, derp. Watch out, herp. All right. A little large mouth. Short and stout. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 